and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you all about the notebooks I've been using during the month of January, how I've been using them, what purpose each one serves and a kind of behind the scenes of how I draft my YouTube videos, how I am preparing for my non-fiction project and how I sketch out various thoughts I have and just snippets of text to go into my novel. Now I'm a big fan of peeking inside other people's notebooks. I, I find them absolutely fascinating and last year I started sharing my favourite notebooks and I started opening them up and sharing how I've used them in the past for Instagram and one video of mine in particular is doing particularly well in that one which you can see and I will link in the description box below I share how I used to use my notebooks in terms of planning out Instagram photos and things like that so this is always been something I've been quite passionate about. I like to use my notebooks. I like to use different notebooks for different things. And I think it's one thing saying that you're going to use a certain amount of notebooks at the beginning of the year, but it's quite interesting to see how you progress with using those notebooks as the years or as the months go on throughout the year. So if you haven't already seen it, I will link to this video, which is all about the notebooks that I will be using during 2020 or at least the first quarter of 2020 and these are the notebooks that I've been using. I've got a couple of Limons, I've got this blue one here which is a lined one and this brown one which is a gridded Limon. I've got two Loic Terms which is a B5 soft cover notebook and I have this Rhodia Gold Book which is a dotted bullet journal type notebook and all five of these I am using for different purposes. I do have a sixth notebook which is a yellow notebook from Stamford Notebooks here in the UK in England. This is a hardback notebook and I referred to that notebook in the what notebooks I'll be using during 2020 video but this notebook is one that I keep by the side of my bed and I kind of do an evening pages in it and just that little bit too personal to share on YouTube so that's why I haven't included it here in this selection. I think these notebooks really tell a story of how my creative month has gone during January and I guess I could start with this Rhodia because this is my tracking and logging journal for my writing projects. I've already done a video on this and how I did during the month of January and I shared how I was doing all the tracking and the logging and how I did. So I will give you a very brief summary here but if you want to know more about this particular notebook then I will link the two videos I've done on this specific notebook and how I'm tracking my writing projects in the description box below. This notebook opens up and the first tracking that I have done is my word count for my novel. This isn't for any non-fiction or essay, this is purely for fiction because fiction is the one that I have big confidence issues with and I thought by tracking it I would see the progress I've been making and this would encourage me to keep going. This is the month of January and as you can see the first few days I was still in Christmas holiday mode but on the 7th it started Long story short, I did 15,160 words on my novel 
during the month of January. So I was really pleased with this 15,000 words and I put my total there as well as the word count that I brought forward from the year before. So I've got 27,000 words by the end of January on the second draft of my novel. So I was very pleased about that. This here is my tracker of whether I'd worked on a project that particular day. As you can see, the fiction column here is coloured in quite a lot. These are the days of the month and these are the projects along the top. So I'd obviously worked on my fiction a lot more than my non-fiction and that was kind of the theme of January. And then later on, I've got my writing log for January and this is exactly what I did. I just wrote one line for each project for my novel and for my non-fiction book proposal that I'm working on. This means I can look back at the month of January and see exactly what I've done, how much I've achieved, instead of feeling like I'm still nowhere near completing my novel. I know I did 15,000 words and I covered all of these different chapters or these different scenes or this particular aspect of the proposal and I can see the progress I'm making. So I'm really pleased with how this bullet journal is going and like I say if you want to see more and hear more about how I'm using this bullet journal as a writing log and tracker you can see that in the videos that I've linked below and there's two videos there's the first one on how I set it all up and the second one which is a summary of how January went for me. So that's the Rhodia Goal Book. So this is my Le Mans. I only used a couple of pages for the month of January and this is basically me writing down all the projects that I wanted to work on for this month and it ranges from the two writing projects I've got. So my non-fiction proposal, which is this section, my novel, as well as my YouTube videos. And then here I've got my Patreon essays. And then I also put my clients that I have there. This spread didn't really work for me. I don't know why, but I just did not refer to it very often during the course of the month. Each week, each day, I would still be a little bit vague as to what it is I'd achieved during that day. Even though I had my tracker and I could track certain things, I didn't arrive in my office each morning and think, right, I'm going to get on with X or Y. I still felt a little bit, oh, I'll do this if I feel like it, or I'll do that if I feel like it, instead of treating it more like a productive business, if you like. So I tried something, <laughs> and it didn't work very well. And this was me basically trying to plan my day a little bit more, trying to give myself a bit more structure, and it really did not work. I was trying to plan my day according to time, and my brain just doesn't work like that. I, I gave up before I'd even started. So we quickly moved on from that. And there was one attempt to kind of make my week a little bit more structured, although this didn't happen until the 20th of January. So we were getting towards the, the latter half of the month. I did write a few things. I mean, it started off well on the Monday, but by the time I got to Friday, I put 30 minutes on my novel and then TCC, which is the Confident Creative, and I was no more specific than that. And again, I didn't feel I was particularly productive. So, this is what I did at the end of January. And once more, I've done a video on this and exactly what I've done. And you can see how I was putting it together. So far, this system has been working 
really really well and down the side I have colour coded my projects and these projects relate to the post-its that are on my post-it board that I've made videos about before and then I did a calendar of when my videos would appear as well as when I wanted to reach a deadline on number of words for my novel which is what's here in the blue but you can see that I wanted to achieve 15,000 words by the last day of January here and I had two YouTube videos to go out this second one was on the 2nd of February so we're still in the month of January here which is why I'm including this what I did I had my monthly tasks or projects and I divided it down into a weekly group of tasks and this worked really really well and as you can see most of them have been ticked off everything but the essay and what I did I took various projects and tasks from the month saw what my deadlines were what I needed to achieve when and started to break it all down and then I have here I started to break down the specifics of what I wanted to achieve on each individual day and I didn't plan this out so on Tuesday I didn't plan everything out for the days coming up I sat down and planned out each day on each morning of what I wanted to do based on this week and this month and it's become a kind of ritual of what I'd like to achieve on each day and quite therapeutic colouring in the little rectangles and I've also continued that this is this week here but that's going into February so that doesn't count for this video but that is essentially how I've used my Le Mame notebook this is such a brilliant system where I break the month down into a week and then into the individual days and then I've got week two here and then into the individual days and then on Monday I will do week three and then start again breaking it down into the individual days and for the last week of January and the first week that I actually used this system I felt so productive I can't tell you it was just such a wonderful feeling and I, I also didn't want the week to end I really enjoyed myself and I think part of that is because I felt very encouraged and motivated because I was giving myself achievable tasks I wasn't setting myself up for failure I knew if I broke it down that I could achieve each task and rather than saying for example work on my novel this month I've broken it down into just thousands of words and just ticking those off felt really encouraging so it's a really simple system but it's one that I think my brain in particular gets inspired by and encouraged by and actually becomes really productive when doing it like this that's how I've been using my brown limam gridded notebook this month so then I have my two Loic term notebooks these are the b5 soft cover notebooks they are my favorite notebooks to free write in basically because they fold out completely flat and my hand just moves across the page really nicely there's no ridge in the middle I don't worry about being neat it's just really comfortable writing so this orange one is my YouTube planning notebook so let me get my little list during the month of January I recorded and uploaded five YouTube videos I was hoping to do six but it didn't work out like that not every time but most times 
I would plan out what it is I wanted to say and this is particularly useful when I'm doing those videos where I am facing the camera when I am talking to the camera like this with the camera not looking at me I feel a lot more animated a bit more free with my words and I am just basically describing what's in my notebooks but when the camera is trained on me kind of frees up a little bit and I have to think more about what I'm going to say before I say it so it just really helps to have direction and to know exactly what I'm going to say next so what have we got here this is not the one I started with here we are so the first video I did during the month of January was how to discover your writing voice using Instagram. I don't think I ended up calling that actually, but I will put the overlay over here. And again, I'll link that in the description box below. What I think I did here, I started writing out a few ideas and then I resorted to Microsoft Word and started writing it out in there because I just felt that I had a bit of the text already. I'd written a blog post in the past on the same sort of subject. So I could sort of copy that and paste it in and then do it as though I was speaking. And then I had a script for myself, which I then printed off, had in my left hand while I was filming away from the camera. And this really, really helps me. So often it starts as scribbles in this notebook and then goes on to a more polished script on my computer and also when it's written on the computer I find it a bit easier to read rather than trying to decipher my scribbles. My second video actually was my writing day which was a vlog which I didn't script for whatsoever and then my third video was actually sketched out in my journal which is here and which I'll show you next. But this is my fourth video of the month and this is how I approach a big writing project when it feels overwhelming. And here I've written quite a few pages. So one, two, three, four, four and a half pages plus some notes on what I wanted to use as the B-roll, which is the video that I took to overlay me talking with this particular one i didn't actually convert this into a script on my computer i literally just held it like that and used it as a script as i was talking and i don't actually have my eyes on it actually i think this one i wasn't talking to camera i did a voiceover maybe i did what i'm doing now where i just spoke to you with the camera facing down and if that's the case then it would have been easy to read from here because i didn't have to pretend i wasn't reading if that makes sense and then this one here i've put my favorite book about creativity but i didn't call it that on youtube this is actually one of my videos from february but i started planning it out in january and as you can see i had a lot to say about that and this is all about austin cleon's book called show your work and I'm very passionate about that subject. This is something I'm obviously doing right now. I'm showing you my work. And this is something he talks about in that book. And that video is now out. I uploaded that a few days ago. Wasn't particularly happy with the quality of the film. But, you know, what I had to say, I think, could be very useful if you're a writer or a creative and want to build yourself an audience via social media so if that is you make sure you check that video out that is my youtube notebook and that's how i used it in the month of january and this is my non-fiction book proposal this is what i use this notebook for i've also used it in the past for my essay writing ideas and that's just because i find i can write really fast in these notebooks so they're great for drafting out first drafts or initial thoughts and this is just 
what I've written for aspects of my book proposal and I have done Beth Kempton's course. I think it's called the Book Proposal Masterclass and I'm working through all the different sections that she has pulled together and by the time I've finished all of those sections I will have a completed book proposal. So that's what all these different bits are. At the moment I'm still in the overview. I am finding there's a lot more thinking to my book proposal than I'd initially anticipated while I try and really hone down what it is that my book is going to be about. We have my journal. I'm not going to show you everything that's inside here but a lot of this journal is to do with my writing and with my online presence and my YouTube channel and I'm actually very close to being invited to join the AdSense program on YouTube and this is a very exciting milestone. I've already got the required number of subscribers that you need. You need a thousand subscribers and you need 240,000 minutes of watch time, which works out to be 4,000 hours of watch time during the course of one year. And I'm very, very close to getting there. I think I just need about 7,000 minutes. And this, funnily enough, has brought up lots of my feelings to do with my own confidence and creativity, which I thought I had got past in the past and that's why I'm able to push forward with writing my novel and preparing my non-fiction but it seems to have come back a little bit with the milestone of being paid to put my videos online. It's something I'm working through and that's why I have been writing a lot about it in this journal. I'm now challenging myself to write for between 10 and 30 minutes every day on my novel and sometimes, especially in the beginning, before it became more of a regular habit, I would get to the end of the day and here, look, Saturday the 11th of January, it was 9.55 p.m. But I managed to write for between 15 and 20 minutes and I sketched out this particular scene. And then I think this other one was the following day. So I use it to sketch out scenes from my novel. I was starting to kind of obsess a little bit about my analytics because I was so close to being monetized or because I am so close to being monetized. Like I say, I've got my novel writing stuff. This section here is the video I wrote about writing for between 10 and 30 minutes a day and I sketched out what the video was going to be about here. And this little post-it says I'd written it whilst I was at my daughter's netball club. So she was there for an hour and I sat on one of those really low benches that you get in gymnasiums, sat on one of those, gave myself a bad back, but I sketched out a video idea that I recorded a couple of days later. I've got some non-fiction ideas here. I've got more scenes from my novel, more ideas from my non-fiction. There are times when, like here, I just wanted to take out what was on my mind. And again, this is all YouTube stuff. And do you know what though? It really works. So I haven't really thought about any of this since then. It doesn't feel very dramatic now when I read it, but at the time it was weighing on my mind, so I just had to sort of purge it from the mind. More novel writing ideas, more non-fiction ideas, a brainstorm of videos that I would like to do during the month. So it's all, it's all work stuff in here. Really personal stuff, like I say, I keep in my other journal. But this 
really helps me get ideas down, stop myself from thinking about it when I'm going to sleep at night and if it's all recorded in here I can come back to it at another time or if things are bothering me about my work or my YouTube or online presence in any way shape or form just put them in here and, and that's basically what I do with my journal. What most people do with their journals I guess but it just helps take everything out of my head so I get a decent night's sleep which is pretty crucial to be honest. So there we go that is how I've been using my five notebooks during the month of January. I'm using exactly the same during the month of February. It's just going to be good to look back and see how everything changes as I hope things do change with my writing career in the weeks and months and years to come. So that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do think about subscribing if you haven't already and click on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and I will see you next time for another video. And I think my next video is going to be a vlog day in the life of a writer and I'm going to share with you one of my days of the week next week. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye for now. Bye.